on pimples. Don't scrub ahead 15 seconds. Listen to this. Do you like yummy jerky? You do? Well, you're in luck because this episode of the Poundcast is brought to you by LouisvilleVeganFoods.com. LouisvilleVeganFoods.com is where you can find all your favorite flavors of Louisville vegan jerky. They also have toppings and mouthwater and Welpdale chocolates. And right now, you can get 20% off your entire order if you go to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com and use the code word POUNDCAST. That's right, 20 whole percent off your entire order. You could also find Louisville vegan jerky at Whole Foods, Sprouts, and other tight ass stores. So treat yourself and support the Poundcast by going to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com and using the code word POUNDCAST for 20% off. Peace. All right, Pimples. What's up, Brent? Hey, hi, guy. Hey, guy. Hi, guy. Hi, guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, are you ready for a great show today or what? Yeah, this is, we don't usually, uh, we usually record the intros bef- after we recorded the episode. This one, we haven't done that yet. We're uh, switching it up a little bit. Yeah, too. we're switching it up. So now we're going to intro a show that we don't know how it's going to go. But, you know, so it, it, I have high hopes because we've had, um we've had uh chris flieger on the show at least once maybe even twice yeah definitely definitely once or twice and we had jonathan snipes on the show before as well that's right we've had snipes and flieger and we know it's a it's going to be a home run uh episode interesting i mean look the interesting episode guys interesting people interesting, interesting sounds sounds interesting sounds definitely interesting sounds you know the show could go good or it could go even better yeah so this is what we're looking forward to a good show or an even better show it could go well it could go even better um Um, here's the thing brent i got something to talk to you about in after dark and for those of you who don't know what after dark is after dark is our bonus extended longer poundcast that you can access instantly by going to patreon.com slash poundcast and for a very small amount of money per month you can support us and you can have instant access to the entire after dark catalog you can catch up on the old after darks and you can listen to this after dark see what i'm gonna see what surprise i'm gonna have here's what it is Brian. I'll, I'll give you a teaser remember last week when we were talking about new words for like dope lit yeah and awesome and stuff what do we have thick thick yeah yeah that ain't thick or oh ooh, that's thick you know i got it could be anything uh, i got two new ones and they are home runs oh wow i can't wait they're kind of hardcore too so we're I'm, wait. I'm subscribing to the patreon right now. <laughs> they're kind of hardcore so you're gonna have to come to the after dark to find out but i'll see you i'll see i'll definitely see you there brent yeah uh it's once again it is patreon.com slash poundcast yeah and And what else i have a patreon if you want to support me you know i I put a little fun things in in mine it's not as active as the patreon as the poundcast patreon to be honest but you can support me and you get some you get some little perks i put up unreleased things and whatever patreon.com slash doug pound and what else brent well there's a youtube channel if you want to check that out for for the poundcast it's youtube.com slash the poundcast and um there are there's um also an instagram and a twitter account as well which is the poundcast for those as well the poundcast and those Um, are run um by our interns our wonderful interns which we i'm going to give a quick thank you to now you know, okay. That, Brent? Let's give them okay. Let's thank him now. We got Jack Birch. Get Jack Birch, who goes by L Bircho on his social media, L dot Bircho, and he uh, does the videos. And we got Chloe Bonilla, who uh, does edits the audio, and then also we have Jackie Montana, who runs those accounts, those social media accounts. Yeah, and they are killing it. And we would like to give them a million pimple pops for thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um and um yeah and i think that's oh i i have one thing i want to mention hey does anybody do any web design is anyone good at does anyone know how to do website stuff i need some help contact contact us somehow contact us and it'll get forwarded to me somehow and you know what while we're at it i'll take your second choice person because i my website has been basically untouched for years i should 
If anyone wants to redo my website, pimp it up a little bit, get it popping. I could well, maybe it. somebody could help us both. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe one so, person or you know, two people, whatever. I Hit us up, sites. find us on socials, send us a, uh, a link. I have two sites that need help, and so maybe you could help us out. I don't know. Um, okay, and then um, I think that's about it. Uh, okay, so we have this remix here, this theme song remix that we're going to play. And this, the, the remixes are made by our Patreon subscribers because the Patreon subscribers get access to the stems of the theme songs that I've made. And you could have access to that pretty easily by simply going to patreon.com. You okay? also get access to the full videos, meaning all the funny faces and visuals that happen during After Dark. You get that on the Patreon as well. <laughs> Um, but you also, you know, the funny faces and visuals that happened on the regular episode, you get that at the YouTube channel. There's a lot of funny faces guys. Um, so this one is coming to us from Lou Womb, who is at L U W U M that's Lou Womb pronounced Lou Womb. And, um, uh, they have an album that is coming out on february 26th which is when this episode is coming out actually so um although for the patreon users it actually comes out a couple days earlier but um but yeah so his album is out today his or her album i should say and it's called uncle jesse's bass is the name of the album and um this is lou wombs uh remix of the theme song so let's check it out let's run the clip and then we'll be right back with cl clipping with clipping let's go doug and brett doug, doug and brett doug and brett talking to each other doug and brett what will they talk about to Doug and Brett are talking to some pimples. Doug and Brett will talk to their friends. And Doug and Brett talking on the podcast. Well, so, a video? Should I make this bed behind me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Brent Weinbach, Doug, uh, welcome to our interview. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for having us. <laughs> thanks for having us, Christopher, and the rest of the thing. We, ha we are here with uh let's see here william hudson are you called do we call you bill yeah i mean everyone calls me bill but yeah okay jonathan snipes hello aka captain ahab yep and, uh, the only, this, this I is always, the only place i'm still captain ahab right? is, is this podcast i mean that burned too much of a memory in my um, brain to never associate you with that anyway and then uh david diggs thank you for joining us on the poundcast yeah, yeah. What's up? This is and, cool. And of course, Christopher Chris, Flieger. Of course, Christopher but, Flieger, but, who introduced, who is the host of the show, apparently. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, I was just welcoming you, welcoming you to interview us. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A formal welcome to the interview of us. <laughs> yeah. okay, you were we welcoming get, the hosts. Yeah. We got to get the interview. Uh, uh, so there's a, usually there's a less people than this. So I guess. For ease of, uh, if you have something to say, we'll just do a hand raise <laughs> so we're not all like cutting each other off. Uh, so, Chris, I got to ask you, where are you and what's going on behind you here? The way that I think about where I am, I'm, I'm in southwest North Carolina. But the, in my mind, I'm an hour away from Brian Lewis Saunders, uh, who's, who's been on the show before. Hey. And uh, he's someone of all my friends I tend to keep up with so consistently about every week we have a text. And now that I, I normally live in Los Angeles, but now that I'm over here, like it's, it's really cold. Texas is, you know, terrible right now. Uh, but I'm used to, I don't know, whether or what, whatever's going on in, in the States, thinking like, oh, is, is Brian okay? And I'll check on him. But now since I'm so close... It's like it's super cold outside, but you know I'm all right, so he's probably all right. But I also think that Doug meant. Oh, sorry. I think Doug meant what 
Where oh, sorry. Are you, is it far as in, is, are you in your van right now? And I am, I am, I am. <laughs> like we know, we know that, but I think the listeners should know a little, learn. By the way, Chris and I have the same van, pretty yes. much, right? Toyota Super Custom High Ace. What year is yours? Japanese import, 1991. That's mine, 91. 3L. That's right, wow. the 3L engine. Turbo. Oh, I don't have a turbo. <laughs> And uh, it came stock with a, uh, a tube TV. That's pretty Which you sweet. can't see, but this is piano burning, guys. <laughs> this oh. is my Yule log. <laughs> Amazing. Well, let, since you mentioned it, let's talk about piano burning. What, what is piano burning? <laughs> uh, who's going to uh, answer that? It's a, it's a composition by Anya Lockwood that Christopher uh, helped us realize uh, for... Uh, an album of ours two albums ago what right two yeah, albums ago. yeah it's a 2019 album yeah. there existed an addiction of blood yeah so someone um, else composed it yeah well it's an instructional piece it's like two lines of text that say basically find an, an unsalvageable piano and burn it um, <laughs> and so we did that uh we actually christopher found one on a free one on craigslist uh and we f i remember feeling very guilty because we went we went to pick it up and the guy was like yeah this was my grandfather's you think you can really restore it to play and we didn't want to say we're taking it to the desert and burning it right now we we're like yeah i bet it's pretty i bet we could make it play. it was not salvageable but he was like oh i'm so glad that this is going to have a life again like it's but, so important to the family and we were like <laughs> oh. <laughs> But boy, did it have a life also. I know. Like, <laughs> now, he doesn't know it, but his is a, his is a, a, a famous piano. Famous. Brent, go ahead. I, I was, uh, you expressed that you did feel some guilt. Did you feel any sadness at all seeing it burn? And that this full piano, feeling it, seeing it burn, did, that, did you get sad? If it had been a playable piano, that would have been, you know, anathema to all of us. I can't imagine we would have ever done that. But... Uh, you know, it's like, it's like how many people were fucking pissed off about Phoebe Bridger smashing a guitar or whatever. I don't know. Like, this is not a playable, not that I was mad at her for smashing a guitar. I thought that was cool and fine. But like, this is not a playable piano. This is not like rolling a, a Steinway and Sons in perfect condition out into the desert and torching it. Um, it's specified in the text of the uh, composition that it cannot be uh, salvageable. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was the equivalent to Phoebe Bridges' Dan Electro cheap plastic guitar. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, of course. I mean, well, remember when we saw when we saw that performance of um, Eight Songs for a Mad King, the Peter oh, Maxwell yeah. Davies. There's a, it's you know this sort of experimental song cycle. Uh, we saw it at, at Disney Hall. I don't remember what it wasn't. It wasn't like LA Phil doing it. It was some other. Maybe it was LA Phil doing it. But basically, the, the, the new music group. But yeah. Yeah, but the but basically the the first violinist had to play the violin the whole piece and at the end of it smash it on a chair so they were i remember a q a later him talking about how like the the writing the fine line of finding a one he could play not like like a, an well, instrument he had, could play all the whole show and then could also smash the singer takes it from him like it's yeah, the in singer the, takes it's in the, the yeah. directions of the piece that the singer this the, 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 the singer takes the violin from the first violinist and smashes it i in my memory which could be wrong too there were two violins right that there was one under the chair that he swapped for just the last piece so that it exactly could be taken that's what smashed. that's what yeah. the reveal was because he was like yeah. we didn't want to smash one that was actually sounded good enough to play at huh. you know at disney hall for an hour beforehand <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow um follow-up question was that you think that's the most experimental piece you guys have thing you've done for an album I mean, it's a famous, like, experimental with a capital E. Mm -hmm. Like, it is a famous piece of experimental music in that history. But I don't know if that's, like, the weirdest experiment we've ever done. I think we've come up with Stranger Things to do. Um, Such as? But that one sounds, that one being just 18 minutes of just the sound of a burning piano with no other, might, might make it one of our more extreme choices to leave uh, uncut on the album but that well it, it was actually highly cut but like to you know yeah. yeah you guys didn't get <laughs> nobody got to experience the full seven hour track so i mean you're welcome but the uh i also right are there 
am I making this up? Have I heard other recordings of that composition? But they're all, they have like people in them, no? Oh, there are tons are, of them, yeah. Yeah, they're not really audio recordings. They're right, they're, right. Like, because it was more of like a performance happening thing. So there are lots of videos of it happening, but it's usually like a piano burning and a bunch of people are hanging out and talking. Yeah, and like, exactly. while it's, or it's completely engulfed in flames. It's actually, people would go up and play it in some of the other performances. Uh, and we were, we're definitely the first uh, performance of this piece where we were really focused on, we just want to get a, the beautiful a recording, no talking, no move. Like we, we did it for the audio capturing of it. Everyone else has been like a sort of a performancey thing where you, people talk over it and whatever, and you don't get audio from it. Yeah. Right. So, now, when you, when you recorded that, did you get an, a copyright strike? Did you get sued for... Uh, on that, we um, did get we got a copyright notification when we uploaded the video of it of uh to youtube we got a copyright infringement notification from are you serious Sub pop records our record label because they've of course registered our recording of that every anytime oh. i upload anything to the clipping youtube i get an immediate copyright <laughs> well uh, i mean we, that was then is resolved but you know right i <laughs> i'm just there's a joke because it's like it's someone else's technically their piece well, it's well we a did perfect, we, it's a license we, we licensed well, we, yeah. we oh licensed you did it. we yeah. got her permission I, I i spoke with anna lockwood and she actually now uh when she lectures she's a, when she lectures she has played our version of it for um for for students because she says it's the only good recording of her piece <laughs> so she plays it and she she talks about it now but yeah we don't we don't you know for the minimal amount of money that our records make we don't make any money off that track she makes the money off that track because she owns the composition it's like it's like putting any performance of any composer's composition and that, and, and then i ended up actually doing a i did a, a 7.1 surround sound mix of that track which i licensed to a film uh i was mixing so a it's the, the Matrix. Check it it's out. A, yeah, it's an end, oh. the end credits of the new Rodney Asher movie. Also, Are you serious? I just yeah, watched yeah. that last week. Oh yeah, that movie's awesome, man. Oh cool. cool. Good job. Oh, oh nice. speaking of which, uh, Josh Fadum, who's in the fam here, uh, was a voice in uh, the Nightmare, uh, and which is another one of Rodney Asher's movie. That I may have added him out of Glitch oh. in the Matrix entirely. He was also oh, in Glitch in the Matrix, in but Matrix. I, oh, okay. I may have muted his tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but he was in the, the Nightmare. Yeah, I think you can hear him briefly for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Rodney and, and Josh go back uh, a while, but I also wanted to know, does Clipping get credited as the performer of the piece, the, yeah. the piano piece? or But, I mean, were all of you involved in in the performance of it or what? I wasn't I mean, there. David period. wasn't there, but the rest of us were, yeah. But yeah. David still gets a little bit of credit though. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, everything yeah. we do, <laughs> things we I get do all has credit, clip. let's face it. Okay, I have a, <laughs> I have a switching gears question of, uh, for David during, uh, it's more of a macro question about like the recording process. A lot of the songs, uh, well, none of the songs have real drums on them, right? All the percussive things. No, are... it's not. There's a fair amount of drums on it, but. But I mean, yeah. you had a rule. You, you guys yeah. have a rule about um, what, what was the rule about like samples or something? It was like, like well, the, one of the original rules was no drum sounds. Right. No melodies. Right. We imme immediately broke all of those rules, but um, the first sort of rules were like no drums, no pitch. Right, which okay. well, we broke all, and there are like drummers all over these last yeah. two records, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they're, right. <laughs> yeah, they're I'm like not, actual I'm drummers not, playing drums. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some of the some of the tracks in which there's like no drums, and it's just sort of like vocals and um, you know different noises that kind of switch to be to dumb way of describing it. But are you rapping to like a click track, and then they strip that out later? Or sometimes it depends on the piece. I mean, most of the time we end up not doing that really. Like, I mean, if we spend enough time on, on the, okay, it's getting harder and harder these days because we don't get to spend as much time together. But if we're, if we're all like around the piece for long enough, like you tend to not need the, the pieces are rhythmic and the, and the, they are beats and the beats are there. And generally speaking, like that, uh, it's, it usually I prefer my performances when I don't need to use the click because I think that the performances are 
than referencing more of the music than the click. I don't know how much it matters to anybody else. So like, a, <laughs> so like sometimes if, if we're doing something that's a little too like, where the structure is too loose and, and we need the performance to be really, it, we need the performance to be the metronome, uh, then like it makes sense for me to use a click, but. Yeah, I mean, and there's a couple where there, I there isn't any rhythmic element except David's rapping. Like He Dead is just a drone uh, that David did rap to a click. And a lot of the yeah. intros on our prior albums, they are in time, they are to a click, even though they sound like acapellas. Right, um, yeah, all so of things like that. Basically are. Yeah, they're on, they're on a grid still. When we started doing this stuff, I remember we really thought that we were gonna have to make a layer of just like normal drums that we were gonna mute for the final but we were going to have to record the rapping to normal drums because we started we started doing all this to uh existing acapellas like remixing existing acapellas and we thought that sort of part of the way that it sort of that the magic kind of happened was that those original vocals were so rigidly on a grid that we could kind of play around them so we thought we'd have to kind of take a similar compositional process but that's basically never worked like it's never been a good idea to make like a fake drum track and have david recorded to that and then replace it that that like just never worked out it's always better to just make an interesting rhythmic idea that hopefully he can feel the clock in anyway um and usually that works out fine or uh pain every day which is in yeah. seven eight uh david when you tracked your vocals were you listening to just whatever version it was at that time or was there yeah we did that to the no we just recorded that to the song it, it, yeah. it, writing in seven writing raps in seven eight is a pain in the ass it turns out but uh but it's not that song is is very rigidly in seven eight you know so like it's not it's not hard to hear the pulse of it it's just like a little bit it, it was hard that was the harder song to write than i imagined it would be actually given all the sort of odd time signature stuff we do like to do a full song in seven uh, where you still wanted to have all of these uh, like tempo changes or not tempo changes, but like feel changes, like cadence changes. Like cadence changes, like a uh, regular rap song. You weren't, you like had to come up with, you had to invent whole cadences that no one's ever done before because no one's ever rapped in seven yeah, eights. No, there's so no, I, yeah, I, I, I couldn't reference the way like Ghostface Killer did it or whatever because I never heard him do it, you know? So like, <laughs> it was just like a, it was kind of a mind fuck to write that one, but. Um, but performing it was not was not that crazy. When, you know, once it was written, it was not very as difficult to perform. <laughs> Brent, uh, okay, what's okay? I have a couple questions for David. What what's is the what's the hard the most difficult time and signature that you've had to write rap for or rap to? And have you ever tried just using the music and you it it was you needed you ended up deciding as you were recording it, actually put a click track on it for me to record to. Uh, I imagine we've done that. I can't remember which instance. I can't, I can't remember which, what song, but so, I feel like so sometimes like, now you ask for a click just like structurally, you know, because oh, yeah. it won't necessarily be obvious like where, the, where we've thought the hook comes in or something. Right. <laughs> the beat doesn't change. <laughs> You're like, oh, I just need some, I need a guide of some sort. But yeah. when we're in the room together. Um, the, the hardest, well, honestly, it's the, the intro on fucking <laughs> Visions of Bodies Being Burned because what's the, what was the stupid structure we came up with for that? Like, what are the... We haven't ever. We've we haven't never ever told said, anybody. We've never yeah. said anything oh. publicly what what the time signature of that song is. Like we oh. even sort of at, what was it? A, the last podcast we did, we were like, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna say that one because like the redditors need to fucking figure that one out. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not. We'll we'll save it for the redditors. But it, it was uh, it's it, it changes time signatures fairly often, and they're they're pretty they're pretty rough. It's a um, bunch of mixed meters. So what it is is there's a there's a kick drum on the one. Yeah, I would say it's in one that, one actually. In, yeah, and then it's, <laughs> yeah. and then the the between those kick drums is divided up into different numbers of beats each time. Right. <laughs> so it's like a metric modulation, but the way of thinking about it really to me is like that it's oh it's in one one. I think we I think the session is in five four, but there are only I don't know that. I, there's, there's like no one five. or two bars that are in five that are actually yeah. where we subdivided into five. There are no bars in five. So you're just saying every time, every one. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's a different, basically a different uh, 
rhythm basically basically like the length of time between each kick drum is the same but the number of beats in that amount yeah. of time is different right every so, time okay it's yeah We're a sort of every time um <laughs> and what's that track it's just called intro on on, on the newest oh, oh intro it's intro right okay yeah. intro on visions of bodies being burned but yeah but nobody has done the not that i've seen nobody has like tweeted at me like oh my god you did this, 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 this. Like no one's tweeted the numbers yeah. at me. It's, it's right. definitely the most complicated rhythmic thing we've got. We've done getting zero credit for it. And you, <laughs> and you guys would be, you guys would be able to break down. Okay, this the first, this first bar of one one is, you know, whatever five five quarter notes or whatever, and then the, this next one is whatever, you know, or something like that. Yeah. You would be able to sort of break each one down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's the challenge for the listeners. Yeah, there you go. go okay, cool. okay. Right, tell that. Good. So I think that was the specific song I was asking about because I did recently watch that video and I thought, did he need a click for this? <laughs> you know, basically. It could be another track, uh, Story 2 of CLPPNG, which is, I think it starts out, what, 2-4? Of a measure of two four, a measure four, of three, three four, three eight, seven, three, three, but but three, it's yeah. that's semantic. But yeah. but with each measure, you're adding another number over the four. Yeah, yeah but that I mean, and then again, turning and it track, into this Philip Glass thing where you superimpose it. Yeah, and in the, I mean, a track like that, the track sort of is the click track. Yeah, that track is so rhythmically rigid. I remember because that was we hadn't really done a lot of like fancy meter trickery like that until that. That was kind of like the one of the first ones. I remember I made a version of that track where i just did the whole thing on 808 sounds just to prove that it would work <laughs> right that like and i just made really specific rules about where each sound comes in it's like oh when you hear this clave sound it means the meter changes and when you hear this yep. this like clap sound it's it's the it's always beat one on a bar and then and then like i played like a kick snare groove that kind of felt like the song like how i felt like the song would work in each of the time signatures but the very first version of it was like super clinical with no like yeah artistry and then it ended up being that we actually just like basically used that midi and switched all the and sounds, switched all the sounds yeah. but the sounds in that song are like very much like oh this one happens on every um time signature change this one happens on every the downbeat of every measure and then this one keeps the eighth note pulse and then this one you know like it's like really mathy i don't know yeah when you well, it adds a it adds a and there's an, a note added to that little yeah. um, melodic phrase. Yeah, bum, yeah. Bum, bum, yeah. Bum, one, two, three. Bum, 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 yeah, bum, 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 but not always in the not always at the end, which is it's funny because yeah. we thought of it as being a really Philip Glassy kind of idea with the additive process, but it also ends up feeling like a very tangerine dreamy idea to me too, with like a Moog sequencer where you have some of the steps turned off and you just yep. kind of turn them yeah. on and yeah. off as you go. And so that changes the time signature of your track that though though it's rare that like in Tangerine Dream Tracks you feel the time signature change. It's just like, you know, it's like it's just this extra polyrhythm over what I mean, that, that, that synth line sounds like Tangerine Dream. Oh, yeah, like for sure. we, we went, we like went for it. Like at the end when it starts, but when it double yeah, times, yeah. or it's yeah, like yeah. Yeah, fucking Tangerine Dream. <laughs> That's our only song with a full orchestra too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 like, that is true, dream, no dream. one knows that. <laughs> It starts off two two four, and then it just and it goes. It just increases in number. Yeah, it starts at three four. It so starts three. Starts, yeah. It starts at three four. Sorry, and so then it's it got goes, four. Yeah, four bars of three four, then adds a beat. So then a four four bars of four four, then five four, then six four. And when does it end? Uh, um, it gets to it gets to what would essentially be eight eight, eight right? And then, like, and then yeah. it um and then it subdivides that four four into a triplet. And then just does the same thing again at one and a half times the tempo, right? Okay. So, so then it's doing a triplet of four, and then it does four, four, five, six, seven. Wait, hold on. Eight. Sorry. After, well, say, I mean, how, once it gets to eight, eight, I mean, what, so you're saying it goes, it goes from five, four to six, four to seven, four, and then to uh, eight, eight. Well, yeah, but in a different tempo. So, like. Um, so if you're in the four four that it arrives at one two three four 
right so it like it takes that triplet and then makes that the 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 okay so it's like a very simple like metric modulation yeah i get it yeah so the temp that's why that's why it turns into an eight it turns into eighth notes instead of um but it is just going it goes up incrementally one extra sort of b each time yeah okay cool interesting yeah just like not that's for neat. rapper's purposes it does the same thing twice but, yeah. you know, it, like, <laughs> it does the same thing twice at one and a half times the tempo basically. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so my question my next question is how do you guys start when you're gonna make a new track are you gonna like what's the process um of making a song between the three of you it's sort of different for every song, like, um, yeah, I don't know. It kind of varies. Like sometimes it's a like conceptual idea or like an idea for a, for a story or an idea based on a type of rap style or musical style that we want to imitate, or it comes from like a, a technical idea, you know, like, uh, we would like to use this sound in this way or this you know record something like this or Jonathan has these field record Flieger has these field recordings that like are really sound really cool and maybe lend themselves this kind of thing so yeah there's a there's a, a bunch of different ways it happens um so if you're going to make an album for sub pop are you like a, a like a typical band would go into the studio book time or are you guys kind of like DIY doing it? Do you meet up and like jam together? You know, that's the kind of question I'm getting at here. Like not a lot of, not a lot of jamming in this band. Uh, <laughs> like you send him a Dropbox link and he's like, okay, I can rap to this. So yeah. More pretty like, much yeah. more and more like that. We, yeah. we make all the music in this room that I'm sitting in, in my home studio. Um, yeah. and we don't we like just, go to a studio except just for sometimes for David's, vocals but do, yeah, do we, you and bill get together and jam or do you guys bring files together and work it out like like how does that work we and compute we, well you yeah compute. <laughs> you don't jam you compute yeah yeah it's, we, we mostly, mostly for the most part <laughs> yeah we mostly start with ideas instead of like just like we almost never like oh you play this i'll play this and see what we get it's usually like a long conversation about like an idea for a track like what what like what about this type of a sound with this type of a song and we want to make this kind of a and usually we like play each other records and then like get started there's sometimes we do things that are sort of jam e but we have a long conversation beforehand and then we're like okay you make a sound over there i'll make a sound over here and we'll start like and then we'll make maybe a long thing that we edit like good bits out of and stick them together but that only happens i mean only a couple of times that i can think of that we've now done. when you're when you're working with different sounds, say like a field recording that Flieger gave you or something you have, are you putting it into a sampler and kind of jamming on it? Or are you putting it into a software and editing it around till it sounds cool? Both. Yeah, we do both. Um, I would say mostly working with field recordings, it's, it's just straight in the DAW on a track, you know? And we don't do a lot of like time manipulation. Like we don't do a lot of like warping you know ableton style warping of things we kind of try to leave things in more or less the like tempo that they were um and occasionally occasionally we'll like cut i'll cut you know cut it like transients and shift it around so it feels a little more on beat but and you know and and occasionally we throw um tracks and samplers too but like uh usually on computers like I don't know uh, if, if kind of we're working with field recordings, we're staying on the computer and not really moving into the hardware world. Um, when you play live, what are you guys, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Bill and Jonathan. Checking our email. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I use Ableton now. Um, it used to all be a, like a really big unwieldy max patch. Um, and I finally caved and went to Ableton. Another one bites the dust. I know. There's a lot of really stupid shit in Max for Live happening in my Ableton <laughs> session. Well, so at least there's that. Um, I, it is like Max. needlessly complicated for what we're doing. Um, but but uh, we're mostly, you know, like um, doing Captain Ahab stuff. Um, 
I had developed this Max patch that sort of basically I wanted it to be as like hands on moment to moment as I wanted as as I had uh, like attention for during a show because I was also singing right so I wanted to be able to like grab it and fuck things up really fast but I also wanted to be able to not touch it at all and let it just play a track right and so I was sort of using the same approach here that it's basically like a like a DJ set um, and I'm DJing the tracks but I realized doing clipping I can't fuck the tracks up as much as I used to because David is a separate human and needs to know what's <laughs> happening <laughs> so that he can do the songs. They need to still sound like the songs and we need to do them in a prearranged order and there need to be clues of when to come in because he's not looking at the screen like I was in Captain Ahab. Like I could just like start doing a song with the wrong beat playing and then transition and do all this dumb shit that I could do because it was all in my brain that I can't do in clipping. So which what's what's freeing about that though is it actually like opens me up for a lot more like I'm like a lot more in the computer and a lot doing a lot more stuff live than I ever was in Captain Ahab actually but like structurally it has to be a like more like songy all right let's talk about this in- incredible insane album you guys did called Double Live where mm, Christopher yeah. Yeah. recorded all the audio on your tooth, th- I'm reading it off the thing here. Yeah. But I know about it. But <laughs> Chris recorded all of the sound from the this live album, not from the stage, but in toilets, taped to ceiling pipes, tied to trees, <laughs> worn by roadies, hidden all over the venues. Um, that sounds like the perfect thing that you guys would do because you guys are Oh, here we go. What are you showing us here, Chris? <laughs> oh, well, okay. So, um, actually, for the audio how, list, how, for the real quick, for the audio listeners, Chris is has put up. A, it's just. A, a, oh, sorry. It's a virtual session. It's sharing, just so I can play things. Okay. It's it's. I won't get visual. It's just to. Okay. To play gotcha. the audio. Well, it's okay. I mean, this is something interesting for the <laughs> visual watchers. But uh, okay. so. I guess to start from the very beginning, you three were on tour in 2017, and it was the Flaming Lips sound check, <laughs> and you were in the room listening to things, objects. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were. We were, we were, like, in, we were uh, in our green the room. The whole way to our green room, and we walked yeah. like because we would always get there. Like they, you know, they would drive all night because they had drivers and buses, and we would. So they would leave a city after playing it at 3 a.m. the buses would drive and they would get to the next venue and start loading in while the band slept and then the the lips would wake up and sound check at like 3 p.m. or something like that at the venue which was about when we would pull up to the venue because we would wake up in the morning and and drive and so we would get there and load in while they were sound checking because we would sound check after them and it was in Long Island. We were at a place yeah. that just like the acoustics of it were so insane. When we walked, we walked just, through like, the venue and sort of waved at the guys while they were on stage, and then w- walked it back into the the downstairs. It was we were like under the stage basically, and the sound was so cavernous and weird, and you could sort of basically barely tell what song they were working on under there. But it was like everything in that green room rattled yeah. with the bass in like really different and interesting ways. And it was like it was like being inside of some sort of sound installation, like listening to them sound check in that thing. And so we were like, oh, we should record this and make a track out of it or something. And then that turned into, wait, no, we should record our own live album that's of us <laughs> doing this, like from the green rooms and all the various places. Uh-huh. And we called Flieger and had him join us on the second leg of that tour. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it changed so much because I remember when we first conceived of it like that day in that in the green room when we were thinking about this, the idea was like find one cool place and the album would be like, oh, here is one of our songs as observed from this one weird location, it will be an unedited recording of our song that you could barely hear. But Christopher brought so many microphones. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't, I don't have that kind um, of discipline <laughs> to be that many? minimal. How many? Uh, yeah, I was doing um, probably around 14 mics per show. And so what, um, what happened is they were playing the same, roughly the same set of uh, songs 
uh, each show. And so I have this massive Pro Tools track that has over a hundred, um, you know, view or ears <laughs> uh, of this same track in different, on different objects, in different rooms. Like here's, here's a spine of, this is just direct from the laptop. Oh, <laughs> good. Cool. Nice, nice. Is there... you, you might have okay. to change your Pro Tools output to the fake zoom. Yeah, we got Darius Rucker, Laura, <laughs> gonna lawyer up on us. Wait, but anyway, so. We oh, couldn't we hear any of that. No, Chris, we couldn't that. hear that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Your, your yeah. output is. Christopher, I think your output is set to the wrong driver. Uh, or, and may, or make sure that you share, if you, when you shared, you oh, share gotcha. your, computer, your computer sound. Did you do that? Yeah, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Uh, while he's adjusting that, I have a quick question for the other, for everyone else. Do you yeah. call Christopher you Flieger? Do you call him Christopher or <laughs> Flieger? This is a real pressing, or, pressing or, question here. <laughs> or do you call him Chris? Ne never Chris, never Chris, but I alternate between Flieger and Christopher. Yeah. Uh, I have okay. I have a question. Um, yeah. So when you were opening for the Flaming Lips. They were in their tour bus. You said you stayed overnight. Where did you like stay in hotels or did you have your own like RV or something? We were in hotels. Hotels, yeah. hotels, yeah. hotels mostly. Or, for, or if we have friends. friends houses, houses, yeah. Yeah. It, it's like convenient to crash at and we wanted to see them. And It yeah. actually, yeah, it was less hotels and more. Um, we started, oh, Airbnb. Jonathan had this great idea yeah, that yeah. we would get Airbnbs and we would like plan the, the tour that way. And it was great. We actually figured out, like, I found that I remembered more from that tour than I ever had before. Cause like you have memories of like, Oh yeah, North Carolina. That was that, that, that weird Airbnb where there was randomly a harp in the living room and we played clue. <laughs> they had a box of they had clue on uh, the board game at that place, as opposed to like 30 La Quinta inns every night. And you're like, they're just all, it's always all the same. Well, and it's so, so much cheaper when it's so, it's so much cheaper to get uh, everyone get their own room or like their own bed at least but it is also like you have to be on tour with people who are down for like that fucking weird night where we're <laughs> in a weird place and it's gross and upsetting you know because that happens sometimes too it, it happens in hotels too yeah, yeah. that's true <laughs> we yeah our worst i mean nothing's worse than that King's Hotel, King's Inn in Phoenix. Fuck, like, man. That's a real Knights, hotel. That was Knights Inn. Knights, Knights, Knights Inn. Inn. <laughs> Knights yeah. Inn. What that happened? was the gnarliest place we've ever been. Wait, like, was, that, was that Knights spelled K-N-I-T-H? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, yeah Chris, let's, for you, let's, let's change that from built-in output to Zoom audio device or whatever it's called. Let's hear, let's hear about that real quick. What happened at the Knights Inn? Didn't the iPad get stolen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost my tour <laughs> iPad and, and then went through this whole, like, um yeah, yeah that's the one um we also like i mean it was so filthy i mean it was bad we, there were needles we were like, step, like stepping there. on needles in the parking lot and i think we all decided we slept in our clothes on top of the sheets we didn't oh, we didn't unmake the beds because we were wait, like i don't know I'm what's sorry. under there wait i'm sorry I, forgive me i did i miss why, why were you staying at this kind of hotel Oh, this was, was a this was a really early tour, and it was early early tour. Got this it. is when we were like, okay, so uh, just two of us are going to walk up, so they don't know there's three people, so we can just get the yeah. one room and only pay for the, the you know. <laughs> this is <laughs> what, room. Wait, which year is this? All right, Chris, like, twenty fourteen. Oh, you got that? Okay. 14, yeah, this is this is pre Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't even ask anything about Hamilton because you've probably been hammered with those questions, but yeah, look it up. I, I do yeah. want to, I do. I am curious, like you guys all know each other uh, from like, I think childhood and school. Were you guys yeah. in different bands? Do you have, have you toured with, I know Jonathan has, but like David and Bill, have you guys toured before clipping and like had that experience where you're kind of like roughing it? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, I I've toured more. I've toured more with Clipping than with any other band, but I've definitely been on tours with other projects, bands, and like theater projects and whatever. And it, uh, but it's never. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's never been comfortable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's yeah. not part of it. <laughs> yeah, Bill. Bill, you've done some noise tours. We've done some yeah. noise tours together. 
Yeah, I've been on. I got, they were they were never as extensive as anything clipping yeah. does. Um, so have you been to gone on those tours where it's like, yeah, we got a friend, uh, my friend's friend in New Orleans. They'll be at the show, and then we could stay at their place. And then you go to their place, yeah. and it's like all weird, and you have to end up you're watching like bonus features on a DVD at like 4 a.m. because that's what they yeah. want to do, and then you're like trying to go to sleep, but you're also trying to be nice. And, so many and times you don't get to yeah. sleep because you have to kind of like hang out with this person that like just wants to hang out all night or something that is so relatable <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah where they're like where you're like hey so where's my so where's where are we sleeping and they're like oh right here you're sleeping on this couch in the living room you're like cool cool you're like yawn really <laughs> theatrically yawn and they like sit on where they just told you you're gonna sleep and they're like so what's up let's talk <laughs> <laughs> what's up i got this uh i i have a a three disc set of uh lord of the rings we could just plow through this or we can play video games or we can do all this other stuff and you're like exhausted yeah. I, I got butt bongo fiesta howard turns butt bongo fiesta on videotape and i was just about to put it in you know i thought maybe we could get the we could start playing some butt bongos ourselves and you know i got there rush was, Lim, i got rush limbaugh's greatest hits <laughs> can there was definitely to, just, like what was that there was some punk house in like humboldt county which w there was like oh, clearly oh. there were like 20 punks that lived there and one of them had like helped us with the show so like had brought us home but didn't yeah. hadn't told any of them so oh my everyone God. else so we were like sleeping in the living room and like 10 yeah. times during the night someone would come home open the door look down on the ground and be like ah oh, fuck a band <laughs> damn it like full <laughs> voice <laughs> wasn't that the bat cave it was called the bat oh cave. yeah yeah <laughs> I've also, yeah. I, I've had the kind of uh, similar experience, but from the other end of it where I've let people stay in play, in my place. And it, that was maybe kind of a long choice, you know, where there was somebody who, you know, I, I kind of remember I was get I went to go to the bathroom or something at one point and this guy was drunk and he was trying to pee into the sink for some reason. I don't know why a kitchen sink that is. And I just thought, what you know I, Brent, I cannot imagine like when the heck was this back in this is when i had this is when i had roommates and i i wasn't i wouldn't have allowed somebody like this to stay in like if i didn't if i had my own place you know but since it was a shared place i was less protective of the common spaces you know but um, stuff like that you know i'm reminded of the time that after a a, a captain ahab show uh, Jean-Louis Costas needed a place to stay oh, <laughs> and uh, and I was like Jim you've got a big house <laughs> and I made him go stay with Jim <laughs> at Jim's place and he was a delightful house guest apparently Wait, who's so, Jim Jim from Captain Ahab um, the dancer yeah but yeah yeah so uh, Costas Costas the crazy house. French um, ex like super wild man yeah 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 that guy okay. and apparently was just lovely and okay yeah, totally for the for the listeners who don't know who Costas is, he's a he's a French performance artist. Um, many of his performances involve uh, peeing and barfing, um, and and pooping occasionally too. And yeah. and yeah, they're some of them are pretty gnarly. <laughs> yeah, he's like a French Gigi Allen, but he's not um, on heroin, and he he's more ch he's a good house guest. <laughs> yeah, he's and he's like a respected novelist also in in France apparently. Yeah, he's a, yeah. he's a he's a really he's like nice a real guy, like very hard, yeah. yeah, he's cons yeah. I mean he's fancy high art. He just happens to do this pretty extreme stuff. And also when he come when he used to come to the states and tour, he would do it in places like the Smell and he would um, make he would make the 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 venue live up to its name. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. I recently uh, revisited his music on spotify and he's got so many albums so many so many and they're like they're wild he yeah, really they're he cranks them out they're and they're all they're pretty different pretty wild. he throws we, poo at the audience sometimes <laughs> i've never really, seen him do that he doesn't really throw it's not so much as like a, it's not aggressive to the audience in that same way it's like he and his performers are are sometimes and I thought I, I heard that the poo in that one was actually simulated, but that the peeing and the barfing was real. Ah, okay. yeah, the yeah the one the one I've seen, I've seen like videos of one of the tours that I saw later, and a lot a lot more was revealed to be simulated on that video than was apparently happening in front of me when I was seeing it. Um, 
Hmm. I saw him, what looked like he was taking a, a poo on a grand piano on the top, and then he was smacking it. Uh, but I'm starting to... Who wrote what that who wrote yeah, that one? Was. <laughs> was that a cover? That's a, that's a Costas original, I think. <laughs> was that was that licensed? Was that licensed? And it was it also did anybody feel sad for the piano on that one? <laughs> I might feel sadder for that piano. Yeah, actually. yeah. <laughs> Definitely uh, sadder. Where were we when we saw him? Sorry, I was yeah, I had stepped over. Uh where were we? We were outside of Amsterdam, a city outside of Amsterdam. We were in the Netherlands. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And that was okay. one of his like more whimsical shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we Jonathan and I, we both we did a show with him at the Smell. Like, I opened and then he played and then Captain Ahab played like many many years ago. Yeah, I bet Costas was like looking for a place to like a venue in L.A. and they're like, oh, you do poo stuff? Yeah, you should play at the Smell. That would be perfect. <laughs> I've seen him twice at the Smell. Yeah, you work in poo. Poo is your poo is your medium. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, the oh, only Cost- place in LA for poo is the smell. I've, yeah. I, I, I've totally smelled him at the smell before. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I smelled him play once. Yeah, I smelled him play. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I got this audio working uh, out to jump. Oh, sorry, Chris. It's like, jump, start Chris. Leaving. Let's okay. Let's get to yeah. Chris here. So, so Walk us through uh, what you got. Yeah. So I've got a stack of tracks of you know 100 tracks that it's kind of like a surveillance bay you know if you're looking at all these monitors of all these cameras in different areas it's the same kind of thing where i've just got okay so i'm gonna play the spine from the laptop uh, just you know the dj and then i got it from a tree outside the venue is that coming through and then inside i've got uh, two strips of foil that I put in front of the subs. Right is a that are on, uh, the range. Contact mics are on the foil, so when the sub pumps, it, it rattles the aluminum foil. And it's also it's got a low end filter, so it, it's a it's, you're just hearing the high pass aluminum. And I think I'm in the audience with a shotgun mic here. History major ain't doing shit with it. What would he do? Teach him the fucking new school that he arts for a bunch of hooligan upstarts full of themselves, not smart enough to grab a win. And they were outside. And then it dropped. And it dropped where the Jaguar's head left his body still sitting in the rental. That's in the bathroom. This is the bathroom, yeah. I'll jump around to other And then outside of the recycling wait, wait, bin. I'm sorry, was that the bathroom there? That's yeah. that's, that's people wait. talking in the bathroom, which right. I've never I don't I've never heard that because I didn't do the I didn't edit that track, so I don't know that I only know what happened in the tracks I made. Uh, <laughs> just, just I, got a little, I, I got a little conversation in the bathroom in one of the parts I did, but that's a that were they what were they even talking about? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> And were they, did, what, did you ever, did you capture any like fecal noises? Uh, there may be fecal noises, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to get a little defensive here because there is a track on this album that is, um, get up rookery. Did you switch to sound minor? What Which, is this software? <laughs> sound minor. <laughs> It's a database for... You did it, huh? Mm. Yeah. Cool. I, well, it's, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, don't, don't do it. <laughs> Nobody use Pro Tools or SoundMiner. Use Reaper and Max. These are horrible programs. You have to use iLock to even run this thing. Uh, I think you, uh, yeah, you got to set there, up so. the uh, audio output for this. Oh, it's a... Oh. We're not hearing anything. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha, so. gotcha. Sorry. Um, 
So what I was getting at is there is a recording of elephant seals uh, that are recorded uh, just off the side of the road, which uh, of the few reviews this double live album has gotten, uh, everything I've read about this track, it's people are saying it's someone taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a, a double live as a whole, I don't think there's any instance of anybody pooing, even though there, there you know, are microphones in bathrooms. Um, if you want actual sounds of like poop coming out of buttholes, you should check out my solo project, Cooling Problems, <laughs> <laughs> for this album. <laughs> Wait, people, people, some reviewers actually thought that the elephant seal. Yeah, story yeah. If you, yeah, shit. if you don't want to listen to someone taking a dump uh, for a full uh, four minutes, don't buy this album. What do, What do their bowel movements sound like? <laughs> That's oh, yeah. horrifying. Yeah, yeah. Like that says more about that person than our <laughs> Right. That's funny. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's a that's a recording of elephant seals. Um which also Christopher I will say that I like sort of maybe unfairly I'll just have it That's working under now, Chris. Oh, what's up? It's working now. Oh, cool. Sorry, Bill, you were saying? Well, I was going to say, I sort of unfairly co-opted this recording for our album because it was kind of, it was in between dates of the shows and you were like, I'm going to go record the, the Elephant Seals on the 101. And I was like, cool, we'll put that on the album. It can be part of the album. And you were like, well, it's really just for my, and I was like, no, 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 that's going on the album. <laughs> and I like strong-armed you into putting it on the album <laughs> because I had that idea of the of getting Josh and Josh's snoring and pairing them like that. So Chris, how, how did you, how did you record the seals? How close did you get? Uh, pre too close. Yeah. <laughs> too close. <laughs> but what call it the fleeger distance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are elephant what? seals? They're it's very the, large. It's the big yeah. seal with the, with the nose that kind of hangs over. That yeah, one? Like, they live in they're in they're in Southern California. Yeah, I thought that was some like Arctic kind of thing. They're also in the Antarctic. <laughs> um, you I know, so there's Humble. a clipping track called "Get Up," and uh, it's, it's late enough I can reveal that there's no real actual live stage version of "Get Up" on this album, but there are three versions. Uh, in which uh, what I just played of the elephant seals is one of them, Get Up Rookery. There's also Get Up Motel. And this is another controversial track, people. People don't like this one either. Who is but, it? Uh, Who's snoring? You might know him. Josh Taylor? Josh of, uh, Taylor, Friends fantastic. Forever. Yeah do, you, yeah, do you remember that band Friends Forever? Part of this mostly. He was also in Foot Village. You remember Foot Village? I know Friends Forever. Yeah. Yeah. There was that yeah. documentary about Friends Forever. Yeah, they like, they played in a van in a van. They had yeah. right. set up. They would just roll. They played right in front of um, where I lived in Chicago, right on Milwaukee Avenue, and I filmed it. Yeah, makes there sense. There you go. Yeah, like a long. That's did you, who's did you, that's who's snoring. When you and I watched it, that. I also watched that documentary about them too well when you filmed it did you get the flieger distance or did you go <laughs> i got too close too well, close a, i got too in close. a hotel room two separate uh queen beds so it, a microphone is over me and there's another microphone uh over josh and they're hard panned ear to ear and okay so there's considerable bill, much bill, more um, noise floor on mine bill I, I said that he it. edited one song and like how how did you how do you go about editing these into tracks for the live album? Um, well, I don't each one has like very different um, I would say each one is is has a very different technique. I mean each like Flieger and I talked a lot about the Flieger did most of them on his I think it, it, it breaks down to Flieger did about two thirds of them and I did a third of them or something like that. Um, we did one together. We did work, work basically together. We we each had a half of it that we like stuck together. Um, 
but each one kind of had a different idea based on what recordings we got or like what bits we got. Um, Flieger had this cool idea for work work where uh, he would, because David would always ask the audience like, what city are you from? Shout out the city you're from. So he cut all of those from all the dates together. I want you to shout out, wait, Diego? Okay. On the count of three, I want you to shout out wherever you are from in the world. One, two, three. Now it's just going through every microphone, wherever it is, in a freezer, on the roof. But yeah, then I mean, the, the middle of the track, I had this idea to just mix these three microphones and have it unedited because one of the venues was a uh, um, had the um, the merch table was underneath the stage, and it was this huge. It was in Nashville, right? Was that it or Atlanta? Atlanta. It was Atlanta. this beautiful old, like kind of like vaudeville style looking uh, theater, and. You couldn't really hear the music from the merch place under the stage, but what you could hear was the bass line, the bass, the pipes in the ceiling, up, which were above the merch, which were below the but below the stage above the merch table, would rattle at the pitches of any low pitch, so you could hear the bass line of our song. but you like can't hear any of the rest of the song. You can just hear when the bass line comes in. So I really wanted that to be like this unedited recording uh, of just that bit. And you can hear, this is, Josh was our, Josh was our driver and was selling our merch for us on this tour. And you can hear him talking to this, this couple uh, in that section who, there's a whole, there's a whole bit with them in one of the songs too, where they're like, because Wayne was selling like this sculpture out of soap that's a baby in the womb. And it was like this conversation with them, with uh, with Josh trying to explain what it is to this couple who did not understand <laughs> what this object was. Wait a was. second, wait. So your driver had his like little side hustle of his own merch at your show? No, no, yeah, Wayne, he was Wayne from Wayne oh, from Wayne. The Flaming oh, Lips. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry, yeah, right. Wayne, Wayne from the Flaming Lips was had like his like weird art some of the time. Some of the tour stops would have like some interesting piece of art that he like made or commissioned and it would be like like there was yeah there was a soap there was one that was like a candle like that was like a skull that like burned in different yeah. colors there's there just like cool ass things that he but that he would for like certain stops he'd be like here sell this for me i think i don't actually know how it worked <laughs> they would yeah, just no. show up yeah just josh show is such a table. nice Sometimes. easy to talk to guy that maybe he became the ambassador for all of the merch that was sold at how how yeah. did uh how did it come about to be opening for the flaming lips one of those weird like yeah i have no idea wme thought it was a good idea uh they liked us too like they knew us wayne was interested in our band and and they, yeah. they had i i'm assuming that we had been on a list of like potential openers and that they had expressed interest in us and then the timing worked out so. was there uh, like was we, there a crowd into you guys no 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 <laughs> we 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 picked up a few fans there were some yeah. nice kids yeah. that like liked us and that would talk to us there were they, they have they have like crazy deadhead fans who like travel um with them that like some of them decided like that we were pretty okay uh but the, like the ones who would like drive like show to show to show and would see us every night for like two weeks those kids had ended up like chatting with us at the merch table and being yeah cool. and they would and there would be like the thing is, like, those venues were so much bigger than anywhere we would have played if we were headlining, right? So, like, there there would be, like, folks coming there to see clipping, but, like, they were the, the vast minority in the, in the audience. And so, like, it, it was also, like, a weird experience for them, I think, for, like, our fans to be, like, surrounded by, like, a bunch of people sort of standing with their arms crossed, like, debating whether or not to leave. Uh, and then them like also not not sure not sure how to behave in this space either and like it was 
you, you put it really well, right? That like I, I didn't quite realize like what a what a like hippie band the Flaming Lips was. Yeah. I just mostly know the records and like just thought it was like you know it was like a cool experimental rock band, um, like more of like a Sonic Youth type audience than I guess I was expecting. Which is like no people fucking want to do drugs, and like if you're some like you know you just want to have a a good like feel good time and you do your drugs and just when they're starting to kick in <laughs> these three guys come on with the most aggressive harsh noise like, <laughs> violent rap music you're not going to be into that that's like not what you really wanted to yeah. see at that moment you know i, I remember <laughs> you go i'll go first but okay. i used to love the flaming lips like like their early stuff it is like noisy like sonic youth like totally like I guess I could see that now they're kind of more mellow and like trippy and stuff, but like, I don't know what my, I don't know what my point is. I'm just saying like, that's how they are in my mind. Still. I'm still thinking of like hit to that. Then the future head. And, um, you know, sure. Um, transmissions from satellite heart. Yeah. Clouds Clouds taste metallic. metallic. Yeah. Their their guitarist Ronald, like I remember I saw them on clouds taste metallic tour and that was like the loudest, coolest guitar sound I've ever heard. Yeah, no, they were, they're still like that. Yeah. It's just somehow the audience has changed a little bit to be like this sort of day glow. Like the music hasn't changed. Like yeah. they still write the songs like like the old days and they were always kind of hippie-ish, you know? I mean, there was a lot of like acid influence uh, <laughs> in, in the imagery and the, but I think like after the big, after the huge hit that was Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, they like picked up this, um, sort of like neo deadhead fan base, which is like kids would show up in like full sparkly furry costumes, you know, like there were kids and like, um, it felt like, I don't like, it felt like a, like there, there, there's David, I don't remember which one of us said it, but there's also like Wayne has sort of made himself into this like hippie rave Pope like there's a sort of a like a worship yeah. <laughs> yeah, the it's audience a, that's like uh i mean it's a it's a it's a pretty incredible it's a, it's a good show like it's oh, the wow. show, a good show. Fucking, yeah. the show rules and, and yeah. it's also Super, crazy. like it's like the highest like production value diy you've ever seen like they really are doing it all themselves but it's fucking nuts like it yeah. it's there's, yeah. she's rolling out in the audience in a giant bubble and fucking riding around on a unicorn and there's fucking th- you know four football fields worth of confetti every night like it's fucking crazy and like balloon drops and all these costumed characters coming out but it's all held together with duct tape and like hope like yeah. they would ask us to hold the confetti cannon some nights you know like, <laughs> like totally <laughs> brent i have a question then you or you go first and then i'll go okay i just i had two questions um about uh i'm kind of forgetting um oh yeah you said that a lot of the crowd though the flaming lips fans didn't respond so well to you and how how do you know that one or how i mean yeah how was that how was that evident one and then two well has there i mean i i don't really want to ask about hamilton either but but has there been any hamilton like crossover fans at all i mean has, has that happened at all or what uh well the lips crowds the ones that didn't like us would it's easy to know when a crowd doesn't like you they like boo or shout oh okay so you were getting there was some or they they leave you know or like oh they're talking they're just talking or they're like this or you know know, yeah yeah there's like there's just like and like you know i would sort of because it was such an odd fit i was probably like actually doing more crowd work than normally in our shows you know like no we're playing our show i can kind of just do my songs and like like occasionally like you know i like play our songs and occasionally like say some things to audience. this was like it became clear after like the first show that if this wasn't going to be a total bummer i was going to have to be like charming you, you know like i had to like <laughs> actually like interact with the crowd in like a very like it was it was they were so hard these were short sets and they were like the most difficult sets we'd ever played for me because i had to expend so much energy pushing all of the energy out to like invite a bunch of people in who weren't actually there to see this band so 
And there were so many, con- it was like not a particularly like well-versed in rap music audience. Either. Yeah. Like in a way that I think we all found a little bit surprising because we kind of felt like everything is everything now, right? And everybody listens to everything. But but like people just didn't really know. Like you dev- ended up devoting like large chunks of the set, like telling people how to do a call and response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Know, it was like, like, people just didn't know. or didn't Really know. like explaining things but so like you know i think we got better by the end of the that tour we were better at playing those for those audiences than we were so you'd have to you'd have to explain that when you said two they would they should say Pac, and that exactly i mean like you would have to then you'd have to explain who tupac was who tupac was and then like (laughs) i made a powerpoint it was great yeah yeah (laughs) we do do this bit we do do this bit whenever we're playing where like you know i don't know like a lot of rap shows um, the rapper will like drop us in the middle of their set. They'll like play, just play a song from that city to get the crowd hype and get everyone on their side. So we have our like version of that is in the middle of this sort of instrumental section. We just drop like one bar of a rap song from the city we're playing in that night. And we like on the way to the venue, I always pick what song it's going to be. And Jonathan cuts it into the set exactly right. And it's always this cool moment. And our shows are usually like, it's pretty good, but those flaming lip shows, the dead the blank expressions like yeah. these were the they we would be like what's up philly yo and then drop schooly d and they'd be like never heard it's of like that no, no. absolutely never blank face like, oh, you should you should have done uh you know parents just don't understand i guess or something like that or I, I, you'd think no i'm just kidding you would think that it would be like i mean we started getting like pretty obvious like when we were when we played in toronto we played Worst Behavior by Drake, which is not what we usually would have yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> but we still were just like, not a single person in the audience was like, hey, Toronto, what's I, up? Like, no one cared. Everyone just- I don't think they had any concept that that was a different song than what we were already playing either. Like, it, <laughs> the fact that there was a quote happening there did not occur to anybody. It was like, uh, yeah. yeah was it, not, it, not rap fans. Uh, <laughs> And, that's and then when you play Johnson City, which I had a non sequitur talking about with Bruno oh, Saunders. They were, they were so mad. <laughs> Walking to the south now. I caught a trucker out of Philly, had a nice long talk. But he's a headed west from the ca- 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 to Johnson City, Tennessee, Johnson City, Tennessee, Johnson, Johnson, Tennessee, Johnson City, Tennessee. Oh, okay, that was appropriate to crash. Yeah, that's a good. So mad. What's funny is like I had never heard that song before, Wagon Wheel, and we were like, "What the fuck, rappers from Johnson City, Tennessee?" Obviously, none. So, uh, and like somebody mentioned that song a few nights earlier on the tour because we were talking about this problem of not knowing what song to drop in Johnson City. They mentioned Wagon Wheel, and we're like, "Great!" And so I downloaded it and like cut it into the set, and then all that day was just like conversations with people from Johnson City about like, man, I fucking hate that song, Wagon Wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone um, fucking plays a cover of Wagon Wheel when they come to town. Fuck that shit. I hate that song oh, so much. All right, real quick. We got to wrap up. We do like an hour and then we do a bonus half hour. You guys can stick around for that if you'd like. Totally optional. If you have another, another 30 minutes free. Uh, but I have a quick story. I have a quick story about that. Um, when I used to open for Tim and Eric, there would always be people that were like, they just want to see Tim and Eric. They don't want to see me and they would heckle me or whatever. Yeah. So I, I started, when I get to the venue, I'll ask the sound guy, I'd be like, so what's the nearby town that like sucks that like, you can say that everyone likes to shit on. There's always like one <laughs> place. You know? Yeah. So like the whenever I would get hell- yeah. heckled, I'd be like, go back to cherry hill or whatever i don't know whatever it would be and the crowd would go crazy and then they'll be on my side and they'll be like <laughs> like he knows that that place sucks or whatever <laughs> that's a good, that's so funny that's, a good good. that's such Connect- a good bit that's really good connecting on negativity connect. yeah <laughs> I, really oh funny. in seattle it was enum claw i think that was the name of it that's like where the where the guy got killed by a horse that like uh-huh. humped him to death or whatever oh Oh, is that where Mr. Hands? Yeah, Mr. Hands is from Enum Claw. Oh, yeah. I think that's what it's called. I, yeah, because I was getting heckled. I'm like, why don't you go back to Enum Claw? And everyone went crazy. But anyway, <laughs> that's that was my little hack. But we gotta we gotta wrap up the main show uh, now. Um, are you? Do you guys want to stick around? You don't have totally no pressure if you gotta go because. 
I can for a little bit, and then I have to. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll get, jump into I'll another thing. You get Flieger, it. Flieger has nowhere to go. Right? No, we're. Too, I got. I, I. I. We're getting. We're doing takeout. I don't fucking care. Oh no! <laughs> I've cooked every day. For, I, I'm cooking all day tomorrow. <laughs> All day tomorrow, all day the next day. Okay. I'm getting my other show isn't back from lunch yet, so I'll just keep watching the monitors. When they come back, <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Clipping, for being here. That was and Christopher, and that was super cool. And you guys are super sick. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, man. And, and check Thanks. out the Thanks new and check out the new album. Check out Check the out new album. Do you guys have any? Have you been albums. making new stuff during the quarantine? Last last question for the main show. Uh, not enough. <laughs> That's my fault. But, but yes. some. But some. some. Yeah. But yeah. some. Definitely some. And there's a lot of there's a lot of in progress stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so. We have some questions from our Discord. We'll get to those in a second. And we'll see you next week on the Poundcast. Peace. Peace. Doug and Brett. Doug and Brett. Doug and Brett. Talking to each other. Doug and Brett. What will they talk about to Doug and Brett? Are talking to some pimples. Doug and Brett. We'll talk to their friends. And Doug and Brett talking on the podcast.